So Brent Venables has fired Seth Luttrell as the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma after a dismal performance this season in just seven games. You heard me right. He fired somebody in the middle of the season. And this is this is big because the offensive coordinator position doesn't come open a whole lot at Oklahoma. And this position makes folks a lot of money. There's guys all over the country that have been involved in Oklahoma's offenses that have gone on to do really great things. But the question now sits, as Brent Venables gives Joe John Finley the play-calling duties, elevates Joe or, uh, Kevin Johns to a co-offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach, what's next for Oklahoma? How do you fix it in 2024? And then what's next in 2025 as you go to a national offensive coordinator search. I've got five names for you guys as an Oklahoma fan that you should be looking for Brent Venables to go out there and attack. And we're going to look at other five names that you need to just at least call and see if they're interested. But you want to focus on the five names that will be involved in this national search. Before we get into it, before we jump into it, make sure you guys join the discussion as always. Give me your thoughts on who you think should be the next offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. And really, I mean, the issues this season have been outlined. A lot of people are saying offensive line, play calling, those were the two main reasons. And I don't think you can limit it to just one thing this season as what's caused the problems. I mean, it's injuries. It's offensive line issues because you didn't recruit well in 2022 and 2021, and so you didn't have the depth there like Texas did this year, who's got, quite frankly, I think one of the best offensive lines in the country. Uh, you didn't embrace NIL during that time. Uh, then you've got the abysmal play calling. You, I, I don't know whether it was just stubbornness or what it was, but the play calling, there's just no creativity there to get guys open. Then you've got the wide receiver injuries, right? You know, these quarterbacks don't have the elite tenured talent in that room. They've got elite young talent, but the young talent, it's just sometimes it doesn't always work the way you want it to work. So lots of things that have gone wrong and Quite frankly, I don't know if Joe John Finley is going to make the offense just seemingly better over the next four or five games, but I think he's going to do enough to maybe get Oklahoma at least two more wins, and that's all Oklahoma fans can ask for at this point is just get us bowling so that we can go to a bowl game and get those 15 extra practices. That's all you're asking for if you're an Oklahoma fan. And then you eye 2025 which is what does Brent Venables and the Oklahoma Sooners need to do in terms of a national offensive coordinator search? So I've got five names. I'm going to give them to you, uh, one through five. And there's a reason why I have Brennan Marion at number three, and we'll discuss that. So the first one we got to start out with is Willie Korn. And you might say, okay, I'm okay with this hire because if you're familiar with Willie Korn, he's currently the co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Liberty. Liberty's had a really good offense. Uh, this year, they are uh, number 27th, averaging 446.6 yards per game, 6.47 yards per play. Willie Korn does have Clemson ties. Uh, he played as a quarterback there from 2007 to 2009, then went to Marshall, then went to North Greenville. So he's Got some Clemson ties, which you would imagine would help him out with Brent Venables a little bit. Uh, head coach, or he's in his coaching career, was at Charleston Southern from 13 to 16 as a wide receivers coach. Then went to Coastal Carolina, where those were those Grayson McCall years. But 2017 to 2018 was a wide receivers coach. In 2019 to 2022, he was the co-OC with QB's coach. And like I said, like you look at those Coastal Carolina offenses and what they had in Grayson McCall, like, those were good offenses at Coastal Carolina. And now he's putting up a good down. So he brings in, if you get Willie Korn, he's probably bringing in Newland Isaac, which this is going to make a pretty significant staff change here because Newland Isaac is a co-offensive coordinator, but he's also the running backs coach at Liberty. So if he brings in Newland Isaac with him, you're probably seeing DeMarco get the boot. Now, some of you fans might be happy with that move because DeMarco really has not had the production from those running backs that you would expect the running backs coach at Oklahoma to have. Like, it's just, 
his running backs have not been sexy. The, the recruiting's been there, but the development and the running back play at Oklahoma, it's not lived up to the standard. So you would potentially see that if Willie Korn got hired. That's that's probably my number one hire if you're Oklahoma. But the second guy you have to call is Mike Shanahan. And Mike Shanahan is the offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach at Indiana. Guys, Indiana has the number five offense in the country right now. At 7.65 yards per play and 512.7 yards per game. Now, it's probably going to cost you some money to get Mike Shanahan. But Mike Shanahan, like... He was at James Madison with those good offenses there. And if you get Mike Shanahan, it's a sexy hire. I think that's a sexy hire. I still would rather have Willie Korn. I think Willie Korn's potentially here a little bit longer than Mike Shanahan. But Mike Shanahan would not be a bad option for you. And again, Mike Shanahan probably comes in and replaces DeMarco Murray and your tight ends coach at least those two positions, maybe a little bit more. So we'll have to see. Now, third on the list, if you're an Oklahoma fan that you need to be watching, this is probably going to be the most popular guy that's on the board for a lot of people, but it's Brennan Marion. Uh, He's currently the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at UNLV. My only reservations to bring in Brennan Marion on campus is from 2011 to 2023, he's only been at one school more than one year once. And that was at Howard, where he was the OC and quarterbacks coach. Otherwise, he bounces around year to year, always trying to find the next step up in his career. And I don't know if you're Oklahoma, if you want a one-year rental at the offensive coordinator position, when you could probably go out there and get a guy that creates more continuity and stability for you at that position. So, Brennan Marion, he's going to get on the list. I don't know if that's a guy that you go out there and grab because of you just don't know how long he's going to be here. Now, the fourth guy on this list, uh, this is a name that a lot of you guys might not be familiar with, but it would be a fantastic option for Oklahoma. And that's going to be Ben Arbuckle, who's the offensive coordinator out at Washington State and currently has the number 20th offense in the entire country. Uh, through 6.62 yards per game, 459.4 yards per game. Like, this is... A very good offense. Uh, Ben Arbuckle, again, a guy kind of like I put on the Lincoln-Riley circuit where maybe not a lot of people are going to know who he is. Remember, Not a lot of people knew who Lincoln-Riley was when he was at ECU. But a guy that I think could come in and drastically change your offense overnight and definitely, like I said, keep a lot of these guys in place uh, from hitting the transfer portal. Now, fifth on the list is going to be Zach Keedley. Now, he's currently the offensive coordinator at Texas Tech. He's been there since 2022. He's the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Texas Tech, explosive offense every single year. Currently the number 19th offense in the country at 6.15 yards per uh, per play and 4.5 or 459.7 yards a game. Zach Kittley would be another great option. The biggest thing, though, if you're Oklahoma – that I think you have to do is I think you have to retain Emmett Jones and then you have to retain Bill Biedenboe at some level. And here's what I mean by this. Maybe Bill Biedenboe can stay with the team as an offensive analyst. I know a lot of people are calling for his job, but Jay and I were talking about this last night. Maybe you need to refresh the offensive line position and you need to bring a guy in that can be a little bit younger and can be a new face for you on the recruiting trail and just on the sidelines on a day-to-day basis. But bring Bill Bedenbo back as an offensive analyst and a guy that can still help you out with developing offensive linemen. And I think that'd be a pretty good pitch to Oklahoma recruits. And the guy that we targeted last night when we were talking was Brad Davis. And he's currently at LSU as the offensive line coach. He's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but he played guard at Oklahoma from 1999 to 2002. So there are Oklahoma ties there. And again, the offensive line position or coach at Oklahoma, I feel like is probably a really coveted position. And I feel like you could probably pull Brad Davis at that point. That That's kind of the conversation that we had last night. And if you were able to pull off something like that, where you could move Bill Biedenboe to an OA and get Brad Davis as your offensive line coach, that's a huge win for you. And then you just got to keep Emma Jones. Emma Jones is one of the most elite recruiters in the country. Great ties in the Dallas, Texas area. 
if you're wanting to continue to recruit at an elite level at the wide receivers position, I think you have to keep Emmett Jones at some level. And of course, you're going to have to pay any of these offensive coordinators a little bit more to retain your current staff that's here. But those are two guys that I think are the only that should be probably untouchables when it comes to a new staff coming in. Obviously, Bill Beanbow, I think you have some flexibility of where you want to move him. But Emma Jones, he's got to be untouchable. He's got to stay here. So, guys, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys join the discussion. Jump down in the comments below. Let me know who you guys think should be the next OC at the University of Oklahoma. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like and you hit that subscribe button.